Baptist Church this morning. You know what I noticed this morning as I come walking in is all the excitement in there. Amen. Amen. We all gathered here this morning to worship and praise Amen. the Lord. We're all excited about it. And that's something to be excited about today. Amen. Amen. To be able to come out to worship and to praise Him and just thank God this morning. He's given us a place to do that. And I'm so happy that we're all gathered here today and, and just seeing what's in store. Uh, for us today, as God comes in and meets with us, we talked about that in our Sunday school class this morning, just letting him fill us full of spirit to worship and to praise him every day. Amen. Uh, in the way of announcements this week, uh, Wednesday night at 630, we will be having our community prayer night. Um, me and Pastor Steve Ashley will be here There'll be multiple people throughout the community will be with us, and we'll have a prayer night. We'll come together and pray about different things throughout our church and community and school system and whatever we need to pray about. We'll meet Wednesday night and do that. We'll sing some, and it'll be a great time, okay? Remember, March 12th through April 23rd, we're taking up our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. There's envelopes in the pews. And in the vestibule in the back, if you'd like to take one of those and, and give uh, to that today. Uh, any canned goods that you still want to bring for Kentucky, you can still do that. Uh, let me know or put them in the orange trailer. I will tell you this. I got a picture yesterday from Altro Baptist that we're, we helped with with some lumber and plywood and stuff. They do have the walls up and they do have the trusses up for their church so I'll be calling them this week as soon as they can get it under roof see what trip we can make to go up and help them with that okay and uh, help them get it back under roof we have items here that they need but we're unable to take it to them till they get a place to store it so they got to get it under roof first the new name for the crochet group uh, will be Warrensville Creative Stitchers they will meet each Saturday at 3 p.m. All is welcome to come out and learn how to crochet. Anyone? <laughs> Tina gave it her best. I will say that. <laughs> okay. She's everybody in the group's right-handed, and she's left-handed. <laughs> it's a struggle. So. Um, at a April the 1st at 8 a.m., there's a scheduled work day at the Ash Baptist Campground for anyone that can come out for that. Today is also uh, Pastor's Wife Appreciation Day, so we want to honor Tina today for that, being uh, our pastor's wife and all that she does behind the scenes. Amen. Now, there's I will say this, and, and I will brag on her because it's not easy being a pastor's wife. I, I'm, <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. And because there is phone calls that I get all hours of the night, any day of the week, and she has to give me up to go. And I don't have to thank the Lord. I don't have a wife that I have to look at and say, hey, I got to go do this. What do you think? It's she knows he's first Amen. in our life. And that's the way it'll always be. He is first. And uh, I thank God for giving me a good wife that supports me. 
stands behind me. Even though if some of my sermons get too long, I can always get the cutoff message. You know, I don't have to, I don't have, I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to watch the clock. She'll remind me. Okay. I had a story I told, I may have told this Wednesday night before service. I was doing, I may have been doing a revival at a church back over next to Taylorsville. And I don't know what happened to me. All right, I was preaching. Everything was going good. I mean, man, it was just rolling. And halfway through my sermon, I got off on another sermon somehow and started preaching it. I don't know how long we had been there. It had been a while, you know. But I glanced at her, and she was like, no, no, you got to go back. <laughs> so it was good. But is there any other announcements for this morning? If not, seven o'clock whistle stop, eight o'clock <coughs> Baptist campground. So we want to say because of the prayer meeting Wednesday night, we won't be having choir practice on Wednesday, but I do want to have it um, either Thursday or Friday night. So if anyone in the choir has a preference, Thursday or Friday night, just let me know so we can work that in. Any other announcements? Amen. Amen. In the way of birthdays, next Saturday, 4 1, will be Tina Stone's birthday. And anniversaries on 3 30 is Dan and Lisa Bumgarner. So let's all stand this morning and sing happy birthday.
over to page 555, we'll sing this little chorus three twice. <laughs> Okay, where are my young people? While they're coming up, I just want to say um, it is an honor and a true joy to be your pastor's wife and to serve here at Warrensville Baptist Church. I, I love, love, love it here, and I love all of you, and I thank you so much. Hi. What happened to your buddy? Is he shy? What's his name? Isaiah? Elijah. Elijah. Where'd you go? Come on, dude. I won't hurt you. I promise I have candy. Okay. Well, all right then. So, this, what, is my cell phone? Yep. You know what I can do with it? a lot of stuff right i can call people i can text people i can go on the internet i can do all kinds of stuff with it but what happens what do i have to do to it every day i have to charge it right because it has a battery in there somewhere i don't know where it's at but there's a battery in here right so and if you got a flashlight and at my house, if I need a flashlight and I find one, the batteries are always dead. That's just how it works. Luckily, this phone has a flashlight on it. But it isn't going to work if I don't charge it up, right? It's got to have power. Got to have power. Got to be able to charge it up. So I can do stuff, right? Well, just like this cell phone, we have to have power. Where do we get our power from? From God. Do we need a charger? Yep. And you know who our charger is? God. Do you know how God charges us up? From his word, from the, the Bible, reading this Bible. See, I have an app on my phone that actually has a Bible on it. That's really cool. I can read the Bible on my phone. And our verse today says from Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So we're going to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, right? And how do we do that? Well, yep, we read. We've got to read the Bible, right? Read his word. And we pray. We pray and talk to God every day. And that's how we get our power, right? Okay. Just like our cell phones and everything else, we need to recharge our batteries, and that's how we do it, is we get alone and we pray and we talk to God and we read our Bible. And if you can't read, your parents will read it to you. Yep. Okay? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a beautiful day. And Father, we thank you for... 
these beautiful young people, Lord. And, and God, I ask, Lord, that, Father, that you will strengthen them, that you will shelter them, Lord, from anything that causes grief or confusion. God, that you will allow them to grow in you, Lord. And, and Father, that they will um, grow up to be uh, strong, grounded um, adults for your service, Lord. Father, we ask your blessings upon them. And, Lord, we thank you, God, for loving us. Because, God, you, you loved us first before we, you ever knew us, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the way of prayer request this morning. I'm a praise report. Amen. Um, Holly helped me have her little baby, and it's fine. <coughs> and doing well. And if everyone will still keep her in your prayers, she's going to start her intense therapy now. Okay. Just remember Holly. like for the church to pray for my longtime friend Jean Osmond. She fell again uh, Friday and she's not doing too well and believe it or not she's older than I am. <laughs> Jean Osborne? Jean Osborne. <clears throat> Harold Cox leads for Duke for four days. Let's pray for them. <laughs> Amen. That's great news, Johnny. Remember to pray for her. Remember Archie. Remember Dan's sister Patsy. Continue to pray for her. Next Wednesday starts chemo. Norm Warren, hip surgery tomorrow. Norm Warren. Remember me and Lois and Debbie. Uh, Debbie will be driving. We're going to be traveling a lot this next week. Okay. Got different doctor's appointments. And just remember us in the prayers. Remember that. Remember Travel of Mercy. And remember everything. You may get some good reports this week. Just continue to pray for David Rabino's nephew. Uh, he's uh, on his way, I guess, at high point to start to get brain damage from the cardiac arrest he's having. I found out he's only 27 years old, not 34. Mm. But uh, just continue to pray for him. I did find out his last name is Smith. John Smith. John Smith. Okay. <coughs> Remember Brenda and JC, continue to pray for them. Pats you back. Thank the Lord for healing them and bringing them back with us. Let's 
Remember Miss Lawson? Pray for her. I'm sure we all have, by raise of hands unspoken this morning. Father, we just love you today. God, we thank you for your presence and being with us. I just pray that everything we do today will glorify you and your son Jesus. God, all these many prayer requests, the Lord praise reports that's been mentioned today. God, we thank you for them. And God, we take each one of these prayer requests, Lord, and lift them up to your throne, Father, Lord, that you're the great physician, the healer of all. Father, I pray that you touch the ones that are sick, the ones that are going to doctor's appointments. Lord, be with them, give them travel and mercies, God, in everything we do. God, we just want to praise and worship you today, Father. I love you, honor you, and praise you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. If you'll stand one more time, we'll turn to page 280. <laughs>
started this morning. Amen, that's right. Amen. Nothing like salvation, amen. Prevailing through prayer. Prevailing through prayer. How important prayer is in our life, amen, in our daily walk. 
every day with God. And it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. That men always to pray and not to faint. Father, we just thank you for the day. God, thank you for giving us this time to come out and worship and to praise you and be in your presence and feel your presence today, God. We just love you and thank you for that. For each one that's gathered here, I pray your blessings upon them and their families. Speak through me the words that I'm not able to produce upon my own today, God, but through you. Lord, through you, everything is possible. I love you and honor you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So despite all that we're going through, and if you heard all the prayer requests this morning, I'm sure you had a bunch in your Sunday school class, and as we did, and, and Wednesday night, and meeting out here this morning, there's a lot, amen? There's a lot of people going through a lot of things today in their life, and for us to thrive, though, and get through these things, we must be able to survive how do we go about survival? It's through prayer, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and if you remember a few weeks back, I preached on the promise of salvation and God promising us salvation if we accept him. This morning, I want to talk about us thriving through prayer and having prayer in our life. I heard about a woman who recently got married and someone asked her where she found her husband at. And uh, she said, I found him at the travel agency. He was my last resort. <laughs> Amen. Now listen, if you're going to survive this morning, you must not, should not, and cannot let prayer be your last resort today. Amen. It has to be first in your life that you're always calling upon the Lord and having him first. It must be your first aid. All right, every, every place has a first aid. We probably have a first aid kit, do we not? Here, or you may have one at home. If something happens to you, what do you do? You run to the first aid kit, amen? You get something to patch you up or put a little Band-Aid or something on you. Well, if something happens in your life, who is your first aid? God, right? And we have to run to him to prayer and call upon him. And that's what helps us prevail through life is praying to God and putting him first. The late Adrian Rogers once said, When hard times come your way, never wring your hands and throw up the towel and say, God, I'm done, but get on your knees and cry out to God for prayer. And that's the way we survive. And and with that in mind, Luke 18, 1, I love reading it when it said, when he spake a parable unto them at the end, that men ought always to pray. What does 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 say? Pray without ceasing, amen? amen? What does that mean? Keeping God continually on your mind throughout the day. So when something comes your way, you're really not caught off guard, are you? Because you've got God on your mind. You've been talking to him. You've been asking him for help. You've been asking him for guidance. Remember what we talked about, about seeking the face of God before you ever seek the face of men when you get up in the morning? Call upon the Lord first thing. So when something happens, and 90% of the time anymore, the world we live in, something's going to happen throughout the day to where we're going to have to call upon him and call upon him in prayer. So let me ask you right here at the beginning of this message. If Warrensville Baptist Church ever came to the point to where we thought we were failing, if we ever came to the point to where we thought the doors had to be closed, things just wouldn't go in that way, why is that? It's our fault, right? Because we haven't called upon the Lord. We haven't seeked the face of God to lead us in the direction that we need to go or guide us day by day on our daily duties at this church, right? We have to call upon him for guidance every day. And when it comes to surviving, then we absolutely have to do this. We have to turn towards him in prayer. We have to turn towards him in survival. Now, some saying, I've talked to some people, said, well, they kind of feel like that 
prayer may be just kind of like a, a riddle and it's all wrapped up on talking to God and they don't understand prayer but the truth of the matter is it's not complicated anybody can do it amen hey it's not isolated it's not for the ones that think they're all holier than thou and they're the only ones that can pray to God and reach God anybody can pray especially if you're lost amen you can call upon the Lord to save you it's not time related in fact one of the greatest things that ever taught me about this Bible right here is it's important for me to establish that time when I pray to God every day. But he wants more than just an appointment in your schedule. Don't think that you're so busy you got to make an appointment to spend time with God during the day. Amen. Everything else in your life is the appointment. God should always be. Amen. We should always, every conversation, every problem, every thought, every uh, conscious minded thought that you're having throughout the day, you should be talking to God and thinking about God. And whenever you're doing that, think about Him for the process of God, I need your leadership today. And call upon Him. Pray without ceasing means. A conversation with God while you're, while you're shopping, you're driving, you're working, you're playing golf, whatever it may be. Me and Tommy played golf together the other day, and honestly, I was so bad, I prayed all day long. It's <laughs> got to get better, you know? I said, Lord, it has to get better. There's no way it can get worse. Amen? So pray and call upon Him to do this. But the thing about prayer, and I hate to use this example, but everybody knows it, and it's been going on for years that Nike said what? Just do it. Did they not? And everybody can remember that. Just do it. And call upon him, and you'll have a better understanding. Now, I want to give you several things right now about prayer. Number one, let's look at the principle of prayer this morning. You see, there's one common thread that runs throughout all of humanity and history. And if you think about it, there's Noah, there's Abraham, there was the law, there was the kingdom, there was the prophets, there was the life of Jesus, there was the early church. All throughout these times, all throughout this system of order right here, there's one thing in common. What is it? They all prayed to God, did they not? They all called out and prayed to God. In fact, prayer dates all the way back from the first beginning of the church, the Jewish temple, Moses and Abraham. It's even mentioned in the very first family in Genesis. Genesis 4, 25 and 26 said, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare son and called his name Seth. For God said, She had appointed me, Another seed instead of Abel, who Cain slew, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Now look at the last part of it. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen? The first family. Beginning of time. They had to call upon the Lord. And also this thing called prayer right here has a principle. Because Paul said what in Philippians 4, 6? He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, do what? Let all your requests be made known unto God. Did he say cut anything out? He said, let all requests be made. In other words, we are to pray about everything and worry about nothing, but what do we do? We worry about everything and pray about nothing, amen? Amen. When he tells us to turn that around, if you're going to survive the end of the day, how are we going to do it? We're going to do just like we did last Sunday when the altar call was given and it was full. Amen. Now listen, a lot of y'all probably didn't notice this, but my muddy Lanny brought it out to me. Did you realize the front step was wet? With people up here crying out to God? Amen. That's why we're growing. Amen. Amen? Because we're not afraid to come up here and cry out to God and say, God, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Amen? And keep praying to the Lord. However, too many of us worry about everything. 
but we're going to survive when we drop down upon our knees and begin to pray to God. So that's the principle. Secondly, let's look at the pattern of prayer. Because prayer kind of reminds me sometimes of like a rainbow, many colors and shapes and sizes, and you hear big prayers and, and, and small prayers, and there's all different ones, and, and, and that's about uh, we pray a lengthy prayer, and sometimes we play short prayers, but that's very much needed. And God is pleased when we call upon his name and we talk to him. Do you know how that pleases him today? To know him that you'll stop and talk to him. Matthew 6, 11 said, give us this day our daily bread, did it not? And it's pleasing to God when we ask him for things and we go to him in prayer and ask for his guidance to help us with our finances, to help us with our families today, to help us with our fears today that we may be running across. Even give us that, that small encounter with him. Now I'm going to share something with you right here. Because prayer really changed in my life 30 years ago when I started doing mission work in New York. I'd never experienced anything like this. I'd never experienced sitting in a group setting in the basement of a church with homeless people and hearing them pray. And me, on a Wednesday night, we had a meal with some soup and gave them some clothes. And they're sitting there, and I'm letting them one at a time pray. And they're specific. And we should be. And they're sitting there praying. I'm just going to share with you. They're sitting there praying things like, Father, thank you for giving me a roof to sleep under last night. I hope I have one tonight. Father, thank you for giving me this bowl of soup today because I didn't have anything to eat yesterday. Father, pray that my boyfriend will stop pimping me out on the street to all his friends. Father, help my husband get off heroin today so he'll be my... I haven't seen him, Father, in a month. He's on the streets. They were that specific on calling out stuff to Christ over and over again. And we should be too. Amen. Father, I've got doctor's appointments all week. And he's God. He'll help you. Amen. Father, I've been sick this week. I've got dementia. You help me with it. And he'll help you. Amen. Father, I've got kids in college. And I worry about them. And I'm going to pray for them. And he'll help you. He's God. Amen. Amen. And we, he gives us that privilege and that opportunity to call upon him. And call upon his name to call out to him. Jesus couldn't even do anything without God leading him as he prayed to him here. And thirdly, I look at the people of prayer. So let's talk about some of the people of prayer. Psalms 99, 5 and 6 says, Exalt you the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. Amen? I mean, what about Hezekiah? I mean, you know the story. There was over 185,000 came against him and Hezekiah prayed to the Lord and the entire enemy was destroyed by an angel. I mean, what about David? One of the things I learned about David was in 2 Samuel 7 was if you read that, he has a conversation, just him and God talking. That's what it's about. Prayer is a two-way conversation, amen? You pray to God, you break, call upon his name, he answers your prayer. It may not always be the way you want it, but he'll answer it. I mean, what about Jesus? Think about the prayer life of Jesus. I want to ask you a question. How much could Jesus do apart from praying to his Father? Nothing. John 5, 19, then answered Jesus and said to them, he's speaking here, verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Christ himself, right here, the sinless, spotless, perfect 
Son of God had to call upon his Father to be led and directed throughout the day. So if we're looking at the very one that hung upon the cross that saved us from our sins has to call upon his Father for direction every day to lead us in the path we need to go, what makes us think we can go about our daily walk without calling upon God? Amen? By the Son of God. So we couldn't do anything without spending time with his Heavenly Father and we can't either. I mean, how much more can you and I do unless we call upon the Lord? You see, the secret right here of an outward success was actually the, the secret of the inward part where he, where he prayed for the church and he prayed for leadership and he prayed for those that were following him. And then you got the church in Acts 4.31 that says, And when they had prayed, the whole body of Christ sitting in the church said, When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they had assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God in boldness. Amen. Amen. Everybody sitting in church together came to the altar and prayed together and they prayed so hard and the spirit was so thick and it came down like thunder and the walls were shaken. Amen. Acts 12, 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Remember that? But prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to God for him. There is story after story. There is testimony after testimony in this book. There is survivor after survivor all through this book. And that tells me the only way we're going to survive, the only way you will make it through life is prayer through God. Amen. Amen. So we've talked about the principle, the patterns, and the people. Number four, and we'll close with this. The privilege of prayer. The privilege of being able to pray. You see, you're invited to speak to the king. Amen? You get to talk to him anytime you want to. Why don't we do it? I'm going to ask you a question. Let's just say, let's just say you've gotten some kind of trouble in your life. I mean, it's pretty bad. Things just aren't going good. And the president calls you and asks you to come to the Oval Office. And he says, if you'll come up here and see me, I will bail you out of whatever trouble you're in. Would you do that? Would you go up there and let him bail you out of whatever you're going through in life? Whatever you're facing in life, he'll, he'll bail you out of it. You don't have to face it anymore. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that he may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. God's already done it. He's already told you whatever troubles you're going through, whatever you're facing in life. What did he say? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Amen? And that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in any time of need we have in our life. There's your invitation. Amen? To call upon the Lord. We have that privilege, do we not? And it's personal. It's one-on-one -on -one with God. Write that verse down. The next time you're running across something and you feel like in trouble, you flip it over there and you read it and say, God, you told me if I come to your throne right here that you'll help me in any time of need. And call upon him. Amen? Well, let me tell you this. The greatest problem with prayer is not unanswered prayer, but it's unoffered. When you won't pray and you won't offer it up to God. 
Amen. If you have a need, if you have a fear, if you have a lost loved one, if you have a praise report, if you have a petition, if you're facing unemployment, if you're facing a big decision in your life, or you're facing a small decision in your life, you still call upon the Lord. Any situation, any need, you call upon the Lord. Amen? Whatever you need, whoever you are, we're coming this morning to call upon Christ. Call upon the name of Jesus. No matter what we're faced with. It's a two-way conversation. Is it not? I gave you verse after verse after verse this morning. All the way back from Genesis till today, they're still calling upon the Lord. Amen? Let us stand. As Isaac begins to play and, and sings this morning, I ask you to come. Oh, how this altar is always open. You don't have to wait to invitation time for me. You come when you need it. Who needs to come this morning? pray today. Anybody need to come and pray? Maybe you're here today and you never accepted Christ. Please come and let me show you how. Amen. I thank you for your presence today. Amen. Just thankful for the presence of the Lord today. I mean, with us, you could just tell when we come through the doors how excited everybody was, and you could feel the excitement for all of us being together. And I just thank God for that. A word on anybody's heart before we go.
Anyone at all? Thank God I'm safe. Amen. Amen. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It always is. Thank God for everyone that's here today. Amen. It's a great place to be. <laughs> yes. Amen. Brother Landy, you dismiss us. Hear thy word and to worship together. We just thank you, Lord, for all the prayer time we have had and you many that have been offered up this day. We know you hear and take and answer each and every one. Go with us now, Father, as we go to our ways. May we travel safely and come back the next appointed time. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.